A lot of history is embellished, but one sect of ancient wars is probably even bloodier than you realize. Roman Gladiators. This is Ancient Workouts with me, Omar Isaf. In each episode, we examine the culture of one ancient group of warriors and try to apply aspects of their training, nutrition, and mentality into our own exercise routines. How do you stack up against these legendary warriors? Let's find out. Now, we need to rewind. Who were the gladiators? They were people who were engaged in violent arena combat for the entertainment of masses of spectators, demonstrating Roman military values. They were highly esteemed for their time, but I wasn't exaggerating when I said it was very violent. While the intent wasn't technically to kill, in every single confrontation, there was a high risk of death. Between one in four and one in 10 chances that one combatant wasn't walking out alive. I'm sorry, big homie, it looks like you're not gonna make it, but I, I just want you to know I'm always gonna miss you. Oh. Always. Well, gladiators started off by being basically the most undesirable aspects of society. At its apex, it became the thing to do. Volunteers, soldiers who had to pay off their debts, and yes, nobles trying to become celebrities. None more famous than Commodus, the Roman emperor, son of Stoic philosopher Marcus Aurelius. Commodus decided to fight in the Colosseum. And this sounds amazing. Oh, Roman emperor decided to participate in the arena, battles to the death. Not really, because he fought rigged fights. Other gladiators would fight against bears, lions, tigers, you know, fierce animals. Commodus, he fought against giraffes. Another gladiator who particularly stands out to me is Spartacus, a Thracian who was captured, enslaved, turned into Roman gladiator, rose up in the ranks only to lead a rebellion against the Roman Republic. He raised an army, fought battles, defeated some Roman generals, eventually died, but he's the real homie. And I just want to say that gladiators truly were built different. Now, in terms of nutrition, it would entirely depend upon the position of the gladiator. If you're more famous, more notable, more successful, you would eat better. Unfortunately, if you're lower on the totem pole, you would just be eating scraps. We know this because another word for ancient gladiators in Rome was hordiari, which means barley men. It was an insult because most gladiators were vegetarians, that this was likely an economic consideration. Meat scarcity was a real thing in antiquity. There is no doubt that gladiators were incredibly well-trained, both for combat and athleticism. We have archeological evidence that gladiators were indeed jacked. 67 skeletal remains were found in Turkey with enlarged muscle markers of the arms and legs. And this makes sense because gladiators trained at schools. One school that was very popular would be the Tetrad system, initially developed in ancient Greece, organized into four day cycles. On day one would be a day of preparation, toning and short high intensity workouts to get the body ready for the following day's workout. So this would be more power specific. It includes things like high intensity interval training. So going at a fast speed, slowing it down, going fast once again. Day two would be the big day, the day of high intensity, long, strenuous exercise, an all out day where fighters gave their absolute best. To frame it in a modern context, this would be all of our big compound main movements. So your squat, your deadlift, the bench press, pull-ups and other exercises. Day three would be a day of rest. Short, light workouts, but mostly it was a rest day. Lastly, day four, a day of medium intensity. Think your auxiliary day or accessory day. This would be skill specific work rather than a focus on strength and endurance. You'd rinse and repeat this, gradually getting better over time. In fact, Philostratus, who published the first ever works on physical education, talks about concepts still applied to this day, periodization and intervals, diverse array of activities that shock the body, keeping it in fighting shape. Dr. Mike, thank you for joining. Nice to be here. If you could talk to us about these gladiators, what are some common misconceptions that viewers might have? 
Today, a lot more um, of the stereotypes that have, you know, we traditionally have held about gladiators that they were wanton homicidal maniacs who went into the arena to kill each other. A lot of those preconceptions or stereotypes are kind of going by the wayside. Scholars now realize that the, the, the fights had referees, usually two referees, that that implies that there were rules. A gladiator could surrender, we now know. They usually did this by holding up a finger. They were extremely expensive professionals who uh, um, were too costly to kill off. Th their life was much more, uh, I think, akin to a professional athlete. Michael, we've established that gladiators perhaps weren't as gruesome as we originally thought. However, can you share some gruesome details of some of the battles? Part of the show was usually spectacular executions where someone might be dressed up as a mythological figure and then executed that way, being killed by wild cats, um, lions and leopards and that sort of thing. One great game uh, set of games by the Emperor Trajan, for example, uh, lasted 123 days, so four months of games every day in the amphitheater, day after day after day. And in, in that, in those games, he boasted that he gave 10,000 gladiators, doesn't say he killed 10,000, he gave 10,000 gladiators, so 10,000 gladiatorial combats over that four month period. He killed, and he does say killed, 11,000 animals. If you work out the math, it's almost 90 animals a day. So it's really quite a, kind of a horrifying um, aspect of, uh, of the games. Michael, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, it's very nice to be here. The question then becomes, what challenge can we do that would evoke these ancient gladiators? And this would be tough. We want nobody getting hurt here. Most weapons were used with the upper body, so swords, your trident. And as such, we probably want to do an upper body movement. I would put forth the overhead press, which could help simulate the demands placed upon a gladiator. For our ancient warrior challenge today, we will be doing the overhead press at our body weight. So whatever you weigh, you're going to lift that and you're going to try and lift it for as many reps as possible. That's something called an AMRAP. If you're a newcomer to the gym, don't worry about doing an AMRAP. Focus instead on great form. Focus on clean technique. Try and lift maybe a little bit more than you ever have before and give it your absolute best. This routine mimics what gladiators would need in terms of their training anaerobic capacity, so we're doing burpees, plyo push-ups, which has a power component, and then lastly, strength, strength endurance via doing the overhead press. First, we're gonna do burpees. You wanna make sure you're explosive on the way up and you have that rigid core on the way down. You're not swaying with the bat. Let's practice proper form. Three, two, one. The next movement is the plyo push-up. We're doing it on a bench, so it's inclined. You wanna make sure you're explosive on the way up, but that you absorb it on the way down. So make sure you land softly. Three, two, one. The third movement is the overhead press, an upper body vertical press that would simulate for gladiators what they need, massive upper body strength in order to swing those implements. We're doing three sets of five for the third exercise. For myself, we're doing the Ancient Warrior Challenge. Body weight for maximum repetitions. Let's see how many I can get. Felt a little heavy, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> From enslaved people's uprisings to Roman emperors using the arena to gain social and political clout, fighting giraffes, the Colosseum was an essential feature of ancient Rome. The combination of structured, regimented training, fierce discipline, and the very real threat of death 
would have made these gladiators apex warriors. Thanks for watching. May you achieve all of your goals and let me know in the comment section below what ancient culture of warriors you'd like me to explore next.